I think the Portland City Council has subverted the democratic process by uh, voting for, to fluoridate our water. Uh, people should have their own choice about what medications they take. This is unprecedented that Portland should dump medication into the public waterway for all the people, whether they are pregnant women, infants, children, the elderly, the medically fragile, whoever they are, we should all have a choice in what medications we take. We have not given our conform, informed consent to have medication dumped into our public waterway. The city council should be ashamed of themselves and the people will have the final word on this. Public water, public vote, public water, public vote, public water, public vote, public water, public vote. Under any other circumstances, putting something into somebody's body without their consent is a criminal act. Because they have the force of bought and paid for uh, lobbyists and uh, people with monetary interests uh, in this matter, they've decided that it's somehow legitimate. But it's to me, it's still the same act. The Portland City Council is trying to commit a criminal act against me. We have to have a referendum now to get in the way of City Council. You know, they, they've. It got pushed down our throats once before, and we blocked it before it ever hit the water. So now we have to do that. And okay. while we're at it, we need an entire new city council. Mm. You know, yep. Sarah yep. and I are both jeopardized by fluoride. So this is going to force us to buy expensive filtration sy systems that we can't afford. For ourselves, our grandchildren, and our children, we can't afford it. They say they're doing this for the poor. It's such a lie. This, if It was all backdoor dealings. They tried to sneak it through on us. We were able to delay the vote, but we always knew we wouldn't change the vote. They don't answer to the people. Even though 61% of the people at city council, showing up at city council, were against it, according to the paper, the city council doesn't care. They're in the pockets of big business, and that's who they serve. What it's not known right now is the risk for people who are older, there is strong proof beginning to show that fluoride builds up in the bones and it accelerates osteoporosis, putting people like Teresa and I who are older at great risk for things like hip and spinal fractures. These are the same people who are pushing Boniva, which is supposed to make us have stronger bones, but actually weakens the jaw bones, yep. you know, and has other side effects. These people are not to be trusted. They go in back rooms, are fed steak dinners and seafood and bought drinks by people selling them these medications, which is what fluoride is, and they are prejudiced by that, and they go out and they find all the research that supports their theory because they've already made up their minds. All humans do it, it's natural. You get in a stance, you Google it, and you click on the ones that appeal to you. And when you've already been bought and sold with fancy dinners on a regular basis by Big Pharma, you just, you know, I've worked in those back rooms as a waitress, as a cocktail waitress, and I see. Harvard School of Public Health just did a huge mega study on the issue, does fluoride lower IQ in children? And they said the possibility is so strong they are doing further research. And this is the Harvard School of Public Health, one of the most well-known, well-established public health institutions of public health in the country. Of course, we're disappointed with uh, the city council's vote today. However, I did see a glimpse of hope in Amanda Fritz. She did acknowledge, at least, that the public does have some right. And though I don't agree with her ultimate decision, I think ultimately uh, she will support the fact that the public does deserve a right to democracy, a right to have a choice as to what goes in their bodies, on their bodies, uh, what we use in our water to what we have in our water uh, to water our gardens, to uh, help feed our babies. And so I believe in the end that democracy will prevail. 
regardless of whether or not you agree with fluoride or even fluoridation, all that matters is that the public has a right to take the time to have a say, to have a choice, and to decide for themselves what they want in their bodies and for their families. I think they ran it through so quick because they know that Portland has voted against flourish, water fluoridation three times in the past, and I believe that they pushed it through so quickly because they knew we would do it again. I think ultimately they pushed it through also because they want to make sure, and I want to believe the best in people, but I think they want to make sure that their pockets are lined with um, monies from contracts and other types of investors. So I think that part of the reason they did this, they say is for the kids, but I think ultimately it was for themselves, for their egos, for their pocketbooks, and I don't think that true public concern is at the heart of this. I think, in fact, if anything, if they really had the public's concern in mind, they wouldn't go with the cheapest, a cheap, the cheapest solution they could find that is made from toxic byproducts. I think they would look at, instead of some type of uh, ubiquitous, toxic substance to infiltrate our whole city, I think they would have instead looked at um, individualized care. I think they would have looked at even more research and more studies and I think they would have taken the time to give the public a say but I don't think they really wanted to do that because they know ultimately the public would have said that they are for the water and for democratic freedom. We vote tomorrow! We vote today! We vote tomorrow! You vote today! We vote tomorrow!